Okay, everybody, we're going to start with uh, a video regarding the TORCHES acronym. So what the TORCHES acronym stands for, you leave out the O, you leave out the E, you just deal with the uh, consonants in there. So we're going to stand for perinatally acquired infections that pass from either the mom to the fetus or the mom to the newborn. So there are a list of diseases such as Toxoplasma gondii, rubella, uh, CMV, herpes simplex, or HIV can be used interchangeably, and then S stands for syphilis. So that's the list of diseases that can be passed from the mother to the fetus slash newborn. And we're going to talk about kind of the buzzwords, the high yield information regarding each of those diseases. So let's first off start with Toxoplasma gondii. What is Toxoplasma gondii? Well, it's going to be an intracellular uh, protozoa. And we'll just go over some of the buzzwords. I'm going to leave out a lot of information. So if you're looking for a complete list, uh, this is not the video for you. However, if you're looking for the high yield, testable information, uh, really any test level, then this is the video for you. Toxoplasma gondii. What it is, is if you hear the word cat poop. I know it's kind of funny. You're probably laughing to yourself right now. Cat poop. Uh, any pregnant mother who is exposed to cat poop is at risk for getting the disease Toxoplasma gondii. And uh, you can also get it through like dairies and meat products as well, um, unpasteurized or uncooked meats. But the main buzzword is going to be cat poop. So I would that would be a take home message. There's also a triad. So a triad of symptoms that you typically present with, uh, in the, the child will present with after being born, uh, if there's an infection of the pregnant mother by Toxoplasma gondii. What is the triad, you may be asking? Chorioretinitis. Chorioretinitis. So you're gonna have inflammation, itis, of the choroid in your eye. So the choroid, retinitis. Um, you're also gonna have hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus, and that's going to be the accumulation of CSF in your uh, cerebral spinal fluid in your brain. And also, you can see intracranial calcifications. Uh, more diffuse. There's not really a good uh, a good single answer for where these calcifications will be. Um, you'll see in another disease, it's more of like a focal spot of these calcifications. However, for toxotriad, you're going to have just more diffuse intracranial calcifications. So this is the triad, the three symptoms that you really should be tuning into for toxoplasmosis. If you have a kid that has hydrocephalus, on, on uh, imaging they see intracranial calcifications and they have eye problems. That's what I would remember. Um, you're going to have increased ventricle size. Increased ventricle size due to increased cerebral spinal fluid because they're blocked. That blockage will lead to the hydrocephalus. It's all kind of piecing together. Uh, you may also see mental retardation. Mental retardation. And that's simply because your brain has excess pressure on it and uh, it will not be able to grow and develop and function properly. Um, one thing of note is you have increased risk of transmission uh, of for a mother to fetus as the pregnancy develops. So in the first trimester, if you're infected with toxo, then uh, you may be safe, you may not be. However, if you're in the second or third trimester, there's a really good chance that it can get transmitted from mother to fetus. Um, the severity also increases. So if you're infected in the second or the third, you're going to have an increased severity uh, of the infection. You're going to be more likely to see these symptoms uh, associated with a toxoplasma infection. That's about all I want to say for the toxo. Now let's move on to rubella. When you hear rubella, I want you to think a pregnant mother. A pregnant mother getting rubella is bad. It's because there is no treatment for this. Um, it is going to be spread through respiratory droplets. If you're ever asked a question, uh, the question prompt will always, 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 almost guarantee it, say, 
an unvaccinated mother comes in. And that is going to be your prompt. An unvaccinated mother comes in. You, that's why we recommend getting vaccinated for rubella. There is no treatment for the child once they're infected. There's going to be a triad associated with it. Remember how the toxo triad? Now we're going to have a rubella triad. It's going to be a patent ductus arteriosus. Patent ductus arteriosus. Also, you're going to see cataracts. And then lastly, you'll get deafness or a loss of hearing. So these are the three uh, symptoms typically associated with rubella. If you have a child that comes in that can't see, can't hear, and has a patent ductus arteriosus upon heart exam, then you're going to have suspicion for rubella infection of the mother during pregnancy. Um, it's going to be a little opposite of toxo infection. Remember how I said the risk of transmission increased from mom to fetus as, uh, as the age or as pregnancy developed. However, in rubella infection, the earlier is worse. If you're infected with rubella in the first trimester, you're going to increase severity of these symptoms. Um, also, you're going to increase the risk of transmission. Like I said, there's no treatment. Rubella is going to be an RNA virus, um, just as a little aside. Also known as German measles, or like a three-day measles. So then we've got CMV virus. CMV virus. It's going to be a DNA virus. CMV is common. So while rubella was transmitted through respiratory droplets or through contact, um, toxo was transmitted through like cat poop, unpasteurized dairy, uncooked meats. CMV is going to have more limited uh, transmission. It's transmitted through sex or it's transmitted through organ explant, transplant. That's my shorthand. Uh, if I had to guess, this would be the main prompt. Organ transplant, I want you to think CMV. That is a very high yield uh, correlation, not only for these torches, these perinatally acquired infections, um, it's also for any other question uh, prompt through like infectious origin. Organ transplant, think CMV. So what happens? Well, you're going to see a petechial rash. So what is this petechial rash? It can also be described as a blueberry muffin rash. So the kid will look like a blueberry muffin. They'll have these bluish petechial lesions. Uh, also, you'll see hepatosplenomegaly. So enlargement of the liver and the spleen. You may also get seizures. You may also see paraventricular. Paraventricular calcifications. So remember how for toxo, we just had more like a diffuse, non-specific uh, intracranial calcification. Now we're gonna have a paraventricular calcification upon imaging. What that means is we're going to look at the ventricles of the brain. And if they have calcifications lining those ventricles, we're going to be thinking CMB. Then we're going to go back to that question prompt. And we'll be thinking, do we see organ transplant in the, in the, in the prompt? Or are they on immunosuppressants due to an organ transplant? Then we're going to look for the, the term blueberry muffin rash. Or they'll see petechial lesions with blue spots. Uh, these are some of the things you want to keep an eye out for with CMV, cytomegalovirus. Next, we'll go on to herpes simplex virus, HSV. Uh, again, more of the limited transmission. It's going to be sex or transmission. So I'm going to say direct. So herpes simplex virus, it can be like your cold sore um, if you have direct transmission, so direct contact, or through a sexual um, transmission as well. What you'll see on the child is vesicular lesions. This is bad. You don't want to see a child with herpes simplex virus. Why is that? It Because it can lead to a complication called herpes encephalitis. Not good. 
it is not treatable. You can give antivirals like acyclovir, however, uh, that's not going to treat it. Uh, it can only help manage the symptoms and outbreaks. You do not want herpes in a young kid. So remember, we're still in our TORCHES acronym. Uh, there are two H's. The next H is going to be HIV. Uh, HIV, you should know, is transmitted sexually. Um, you're going to see recurrent infections. If their immune system is knocked out through those T helper cells, the CD4 positive cells, you're going to see recurrent infections. You're going to see hepatosplenomegaly. You're going to see uh, CNS issues, cranial problems. You're going to see diarrhea, more like a chronic diarrhea. Chronic diarrhea. Uh, that's about all I have to say for that. Just remember that H HIV and HSV are both perinatally acquired infections. We're going to end up with syphilis. syphilis. I think that's how you spell it. All right. This is caused by treponema pallidum. Treponema pallidum. Hopefully you understand that by now. Uh, it is transmitted sexually, so a lot of sexually transmitted diseases. We've got CMV, HSV, HIV, syphilis. All these are sexually transmitted. Um, what it's going to be is you're going to see a painless chancre. Painless. So there are two painful lesions, and one of them is going to be herpes, uh, and then the other one is going to be hemophilus ducri. Uh, those are the two common origins of painful uh, genital lesions. Everything else is going to be painless for the most part. So herpes, simplex virus, and haemophilus ducri are going to be your two bugs that cause painful lesions. So if you see a large, single, painless chancre, you need to be thinking syphilis caused by treponema pallidum. Um, what are some of the child's manifestation. So the mother would see the painless chancre. However, the kid is going to experience facial problems. You're going to see like a characteristic facial problems with, uh, with Hutchinson's teeth. Hutchinson's teeth. This is a buzzword. It's going to be like notched teeth. I'd really recommend googling Hutchinson's teeth because they have a very distinct characteristic. Uh, it's really kind of hard to describe besides more of like a notching of the teeth. Um, you've also got a saddle nose. That's a very prominent facial uh, thing. So if you, I'd also recommend Googling saddle nose just so you know what it looks like. Um, it, it's definitely a higher yield buzzword associated with a syphilis born infected child. You may also see deafness. Uh, you'll have that hepatosplenomegaly, you'll have anemia, there's a whole bunch of symptoms that can occur, um, metaphyseal problems, and this is going to be a big one, so you'll have metaphyseal lesions, Physial. so metaphyses of your long bones, then also you'll have Okay, let's try and let's start this over. See if I can spell it. Wimberg's sign. All right, so you'll have Wimberg sign, and what this is going to be is it's going to be your proximal tibia metaphyseal destruction. So you're going to look at your tibia, so the long bone of your lower leg, and you're going to take a look at that tibia, and if the proximal region is destroyed, if that metaphysis is destroyed, then you'll have Wimberg sign upon uh, radiologic examination. So this is the TORCHES acronym. Uh, I'm going to go back to the first screen. TORCHES, you're going to stand for toxo, rubella, the CMV, cytomegalovirus, HSV, HIV, and then skip the vowels, and then you'll end up with syphilis. So this is just an easy way to remember the perinatally acquired infections. Hopefully you're you're kind of taking away blueberry muffin rash, you're thinking CMV. This triad, you're thinking toxo. You have the rubella triad with PDA, cataracts, and deafness. Uh, pull out those buzzwords. This is the high yield information 
that, that you can be tested on almost at any level. Um, if you found this video useful, please click like. I always enjoy hearing some comments. If you have any questions, be sure to ask. Otherwise, subscribe for more great videos, and have a good day. Thanks.